Welcome to this week's SV Links video. Well, we live in Southern California, and as such, we are not used to severe weather at all, and we've got some coming, which the news agencies are sensationalizing by calling it the Atmospheric River, which means we're going to get some rain. Um, it's not going to rain for a couple of days yet, but we've decided to go ahead and move our whole building operation to the garage this week, and we are going to get to work on constructing the dagger boards. Now we don't want to lose any time, so since we can't work on the boat at the lot, we decided that uh, we'll keep going. And the fact is that we have to build these at some point. And so even though they're part of our official phase three that we were going to get working on, we are still not going to lose time this way, and so we want to build these dagger boards. So we'll go ahead and go out for the first couple days where it's not raining, and we'll use those days to cut up the material out on the driveway. And then once the rains comes, we'll move into the garage. We'll have constructed a, a work table for this, and we'll start assembling all of the pieces that we cut and gluing them together, and these dagger boards will start to take shape. So. Let's go show you that whole process and uh, how we're building these dagger boards, at least for part one here. So let's head out to the garage. Well, we're here in the garage today. We're gonna start building our dagger boards. This is all the material we're going to be using, some foam, some cedar planks. It's nice out right now, so we've got the time to prep the garage and uh, get it ready for the next end of the week. Looks like it's going to rain pretty heavy again, so we'll be able to do some work in here protected. Right. The uh, forecast for the rain starts two days from now, and it goes on and off, but uh, it pretty much goes for a week. There'll be a day or two inside of there that is not raining, but not enough for us to go over there to the lot and do something like uh, do the copper coat on the other hull, because we need about four days straight of sun and really not gonna have that for the next week. So it makes much more sense to do what Brian said, to come inside our garage here. While it's raining out there, we won't care. And that pile of off-cut scrap is gonna become these beautiful 12 foot long dagger boards. So we're going to show you how we're going to turn that into those. And that's some more materials than just that. The, uh, we have some, some uh, western red cedar that came with the kit for it. And these offcuts came with the kit. But we also have to add some PVC foam as well. And uh, a few other things, some sheaves and things. And they're on their way. But we've got plenty of work to do to start with because we're going to build the spine first. And that's built out of just those parts right there. And we're going to show you all that as we build it. The first issue we had to deal with were some missing materials from the kit. And the thing is, is that this is hull number one of the Solitaire 1520. And so uh, Schoening had to go through some oh, logistical and uh, organizational problems getting this first kit together. And so a few things got left out. And the good news is, is that, uh, you know, this is hole number one, and for future purchases of the kit, I'm sure they're going to have that all ironed out now, since uh, they made the mistakes on number one. But that doesn't really help us. No. Um, the first piece of material that was left out was the balsa wood, and that goes here. Along with the western red cedar block, these two blocks of balsa are inserted into the spine of the dagger boards. However, Robert suggested that since we don't have the balsa, we use off-cut foam to replace the balsa wood. So, so that's what we're going to be cutting next. Well, the first thing we're doing is just cutting some two by fours because we have to make a table to build these dagger boards on. And uh, the table has to be a minimum of 12 feet long. The dagger boards are actually about 12 feet, eight inches or eight, eight, eight or nine inches. Um, so we're gonna construct a little table to uh, build these on. And I'll just have Brian cut us some cross members here. Being it's at my house, we're going to uh, do it on the grass so we add our sawdust as a little mulch. <laughs> so 
So let's make it up a little platform here to uh, build this on. This is uh, just some scrap plywood we had laying around. It's fine. Uh, once we screw it into the frame, it'll hold it nicely. And uh, it's a little longer than the frame, but not by that much. So it'll be fine. It just needs something to construct this on that uh, won't move around on us. This will do it. Here, we are cutting one inch or 25 millimeter thick off-cut foam sheets into planks for the portion of the spine of the daggerboards that will now get foam instead of balsa wood. We decided to use my radial arm saw for this since there wouldn't be too many of these cuts. Otherwise, we would have set up the table saw, though, as you will soon see, we will be cutting a whole lot more off-cut foam strips than we anticipated in order to complete these dagger boards. The balsa wood isn't extremely strong, so the foam with fiberglass on both sides of each strip is plenty strong enough to replace the wood. All of it will be encased in fiberglass anyway, about nine layers, top and bottom, which is the main strength of the boards. That's one, that's the front. Yesterday we got all of these pieces cut for the spine of the dagger board. This is the uh, strong part. It goes with some stacked pieces that are gonna be stacked like this, and then we'll get to some um, red cedar, and then some more of these again. And this is both dagger boards worth here. So we're gonna get the peel ply off of these right now. And then we'll cut up the red cedar. And then we're gonna epoxy these all together into blocks like this. And uh, ready to uh, get to the next phase of the, of the uh, spine of this. And so um, once these are done, then we're gonna be creating a glass layer of seven layers on either side of the spine. So we'll work on that after we get this done. We have to pull this peel ply because we're gonna be bonding these surfaces together and obviously the epoxy isn't gonna to stick to the peel ply. So we've gotta get those all set and we can bond these all together. One more to go. Since we are making a portion of these spines from our fiberglass sided foam off cuts, instead of balsa wood strips, we asked the people at Shoning to recalculate the strength needed for the dagger boards to see if we should add additional layers of glass around the foam spines to get them up to par with the balsa wood version. We're still waiting on that answer, but it isn't holding us up since we have plenty to do for a few days before we get to wrapping the spines in fiberglass. It was after we cut up all the strips for the spine of the dagger board that we started looking at the body and what it's made out of and talked to Shonink and found out that we were looking for some PVC foam in the kit. And when we went and looked, we couldn't find it. And it turns out they forgot to ship that foam as well as the balsa wood. So we had to come up with a new plan and we had two options. And the first option was to go out and locally purchase some PVC foam. But the issue here is time and cost. It would take a week or more to order and receive that foam, and it would cost us about $2,000. Since we're already over budget, we really didn't want to have to spend that extra money, and we really wanted to get to work on these items during the week of rain. We decided to go with plan B and cut up even more of the offcut to make the body of the dagger boards. And there was no time or cost penalty uh, that way. So fortunately, Shonig sends a whole bunch of the offcuts. These, these things are made, all our parts are made in these giant panels. And when they cut them all out with their a water jet, it leaves a lot of pieces. And they send all of those with the kit. So we have those to use to build all this stuff. So off to the lot we went and into that new white trailer where we had to sort out all of the various uh, offcut pieces that we would need to build both the dagger boards, the, all of the whole body of them and everything. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at on that. So we're just trimming off the edges of these to make sure that they're uh, nice. Just 
itty little cut. Next, it was time to use some epoxy to bond the strips for the spine together. The long ones you see are the bottom section of the dagger boards and the short ones are at the top. We still haven't cut the western red cedar strips which go between these two foam blocks. The strips that make these blocks, both the foam and western red cedar, are done vertically in the boards. The reason they're made in three sections is so that there are natural break points in the boards at the top and bottom of the red cedar sections. Once glue was applied to the sides of the foam strips, we just clamp them together to cure for later use when we will assemble the entire dagger board pieces. That was the last thing we accomplished on the first day of working on building our dagger boards. So this way they could set up overnight. We used West System Epoxy on these so that they would set up faster and be ready the next day to move out of the way to make room for us to start cutting all the strips we'll need to build the body of the dagger boards from off-cut foam pieces. Now that we realized we were going to need to cut a whole lot more strips from our off-cuts, we switched to using a table saw as it is much faster and also easier for us to set up outdoors where cleanup was simpler. It also had a better vacuum dust collection system, so very little foam dust escaped as we cut. What we're cutting now aren't the spine. These are going to be the actual uh, foam that we're going to carve the curved shape of the dagger board out of. So we stack these up in layers, three, three, two, one. That'll give a jagged edge to it, and then we'll be running a, a sander down there to get the perfect shape based off a template that we'll put on there. All the strips had to be cut into five basic lengths. That means that we must cut the strips at 200 millimeters for this end piece, then 1,050 millimeters up to the first break point, followed by 800 millimeters to match the length of the western red cedar in the spine, and finally 1,850 millimeters on the trailing edge, which will be cut at an angle later. Then over on the leading edge, there are two red cedar inserts for where the two sheaves will be located. And that required us to cut the foam at 400 millimeters and 1300 millimeter lengths. All right, let's show you how these dagger boards work and where they break away at the bottom of that red cedar block that is part of the spine. Here you can see an image of the side of SV links. The dagger board casings exit the hull at the angled side just below the deck walkway and out the side of the canoes below the waterline but above the keel. Now let's superimpose the dagger board in that casing. To start with, this is the raised portion of the board. You can see that the angled section is up exposed, which is why it's cut at an angle to reduce the windage somewhat. Now let's lower the board down to its full depth. You can see that where it exits from the casing, the western red cedar is strengthening the board at the point where the water pressure will be trying to bend it backwards or from the side as we sail. With the fiberglass wrap and red cedar spine at the stress point, the boards will be plenty strong enough to handle even side pressure as the boat attempts to slip sideways due to wind pressure and or water current. That red cedar block beefs up the boards where they exit the casings. However, if we hit something, we don't want our casings getting damaged, which could put a hole in our boat. So we want the dagger boards to be weaker than the casings and, if needed, to break off at the designed weak point at the bottom of the western cedar block. That should protect our boat from damage and leaks. Okay, now you know why we're building them the way we are. Let's get back to construction. Right. We have... Uh all of the various lengths, widths, thicknesses, all figured out and cut um, into these pieces for making our two dagger boards. But now we've got to cut them all to length. So we're gonna do that right now. You can see the leading edge of the storm rolling in, though it isn't raining yet. We still had time to measure out all the lengths of each strip, then use our chop saw to cut the strips one by one until we had all 80 of them cut to the right length for both dagger boards. Now, they're ready to epoxy together in the next stage, but that will be in part two of the dagger board construction videos.
since we're using off-cut foam, these already have fiberglass on both sides. And we, that makes that really hard to sand because we have to shape this dagger board. And we really want to be shaping it on mostly foam. I say mostly because there's still going to be these little pillars of uh, glass, uh, epoxy, excuse me, that goes through. But at least we can get rid of the actual sheets of fiberglass on the outside. So we won't take it off of all of them, but we're going to take it off of the ones that face out that we have to actually uh, form to the shape of the outside curves. The inside ones won't matter. So for right now, we're going to start cutting off this stuff, uh, which again, is a kind of a pain. If we just had foam without doing off cuts, it would be great, but Shoning forgot to send it in our kit. And they apologized, but they literally just forgot. And it's there in South Africa and getting foam from them now is out of the question. So uh, the other option we had was to make it out of these off cuts. So we're gonna go through that extra work. Here, we're cutting off one side of the fiberglass layers from a piece of our foam strip with our small table saw that we borrowed from cousin Todd Blood. We borrowed as many tools as possible from friends and family since our budget is limited and tools can run up a lot of costs. Since our table saw blade wasn't tall enough to cut off the fiberglass layer in one pass, we had to flip each one over and send it through again to finish the removal of that layer. Speaking of borrowing tools, we also borrowed the chop saw you will see from another family member, Travis Blood. So amongst the uh, spine of foam that we have, there's also this red cedar. So these also have to get cut to the same 800 millimeter length. So we've got them butted up at one end here and uh, all clamped together. We're just going to do one cut and cut them all right at once. All right. There we have it. The red cedar spine. What we've got going here now is you can see all of the pieces that we've cut here. Now the dagger board isn't that wide because this is actually both dagger boards laid out together. So two of each one. So this is when we, when we finish, this will be half that width, although this is the spine. But again, this is every other one of these comes out except the, the spine and this collapses in. But these are all the pieces for both dagger boards. And, uh, taken a couple days of work to get these all measured, cut, and strip off all of the fiberglass from one side. We left it on the other side because it doesn't matter there. And because there's a fiberglass involved here now, since this isn't just foam, we, uh, sorry about the camera, uh, we made it so that there's a break point right across here at the end of the red cedar. So these will all line up when, once we get it done. And then on the other side of the red cedar, there'll be another break point right there. Those are the two points where the dagger boards will snap if we hit something rather than uh, damage the boat. Now, we're doing one more thing that isn't called for in the plans, although I did clear it with uh, Shonig, which is that uh, we're building these dagger boards out of this foam and of course fiberglass wrapped and such. And we have our two breakaway points and that's all great. But we're also going to build the dagger board casing that this goes into. But on that, instead of fiberglass, we're going to build that out of, of the basalt that we have uh, left over still. And that will make that 20% um, stronger. So it's even less likely that if we hit something that it will damage the boat because these will have these two breakaway points. And also this is weaker than the casing itself. So it's more likely to, to the dagger board will get damaged and not the boat. So that's all the plan and soon uh, the next phase of this as we cut the other piece of redwood here, um, western red cedar I should say, the uh, next phase is going to be to start uh, epoxying all these pieces into the dagger boards and then following that we're going to have to contour them because right now it's going to be stair-stepped with uh, these pieces that, like this. And I also want to mention that the plans call for something a little bit different than what we're doing. The plans call us for us to just make a rectangle, a solid rectangle of, of foam and spine, and then carve out the dagger board from that. 
but I'll show you in a diagram here how you can see that that just wastes a lot of foam that you're sanding away. And so we did it differently than that, um, which again, here you can see in this uh, cutaway, that we stair-stepped it and we don't have to grind away and sand away as much foam this way. Because a couple of things there, if we had purchased the foam that was supposed to come in the kit, uh, it's about it's between twelve and twelve hundred and two thousand dollars worth of PVC foam, and we decided to save that money by building it out of these uh, offcut uh, pieces. But that uses up a lot of our offcuts. We have many uses for offcuts, and we still have some left, but for what we want to do. But this does use up a lot, and so because of that, we didn't want to waste it sanding it away. So we tried to use as little foam as possible to get the uh, shape of the dagger board. And, and because of that, we're also making up a special jig, which we'll be showing you to help us uh, sand and contour this thing. And we'll, we'll get to that. So here in part one of our dagger board construction, we got all of the materials cut and the spine all glued together. Right. And so uh, that ended this week, but Next week, we're having another atmospheric rubber <laughs> coming through, and this one's even bigger. A big one. <laughs> right. So it's going to last about five days. So we're going to go ahead on to part two of constructing the dagger boards, and that will involve taking all the various pieces and bonding them all together into the shape of the actual dagger board. And we'll see how far we get, but uh, we also need to sand that thing into a teardrop shape, and so we're going to be constructing a jig that allows us to do that and keep them perfectly straight. So we got a lot of work to go to get the tools set up to get it sanded properly as well. And then uh, if we get that done, we'll move on to glassing, but we'll see how far we get in those next five days. So thank you all for watching this video. We do appreciate your time. And uh, we also appreciate all of our patrons. All the patrons. Who uh, help our project all along. Yes, thank you to everyone, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon to be notified of that next video. Yeah, and we'll see you next week out in the garage. Uh, it'll be raining outside, but we'll be dry inside, <laughs> working on those dagger boards. See you then. Bye.